So Hans, correct me if you're wrong, but as far as I know, you're a long-term investor. When you're thinking about Palantir into the future, what is your long-term vision for this company? What can they create? What type of company can they turn into over a five-year, 10-year horizon? Well, obviously, Alex Karp talks about them creating the most valuable software company on the planet. I, I love that vision. I think that that is an incredibly good vision, and I'm glad that Palantir has that type of ambition. I don't know that they will be the largest software company in the world in the next five to 10 years, um, just because there are some other very large, you know, I, I think that it's highly likely that an AI type play will be the largest software company in the world 10 years from now. Um, so there are a variety of options. It could be something like OpenAI, it could be Tesla. Um, Palantir obviously has a great foundation, but I think that they are, and, and, and if an infrastructure play is a great position to have right now, if they can be a base layer for large AI value generation in the future for big companies, that's a great thing. And then what I'm hoping for, and they're moving in this direction, is that they continue to simplify their product and drive down because right now it does take four deployed engineers for palantir that have to go in and they have to embed with a customer and they have to get palantir system specifically connected and configured to work for their clients um that is a great solution to get started uh, and I know that they have significantly reduced the amount of time that an FDE has to spend at a client's location. Um, and obviously, the more complex the application, the more time that they have to spend as well. But they've been driving that down over time. If they can get to the point where clients and customers can go onto Palantir's website, they can download something for free. They can start playing with it in their business and they don't need any personal time or attention from uh, an actual person at Palantir. Well, that opens up an entirely new magnitude of TAM because I think there's a lot of value generation that's going to occur over the next 10 years. And I believe that most of that value generation is actually going to be new companies. It's not going to be big existing companies, which Palantir is a great fit for big, important, existing companies and institutions. Um, but I think the TAM for companies that may be very, very small right now, but they're going to be the next Googles, the next Apples, the next Facebook, the next Tesla. I think there's a number of those companies that are going to be created, you know, anywhere they could exist now but just be very small or they could be started over the next one year two year three years like we're at one of those major technological inflection points where these types of companies and unicorns get created um, and you we've seen this kind of over and over again as a new technology has emerged that companies that were built on the backbone of the cell phone piece of hardware and being able to create applications that lived in the cloud, that those were a huge driver for economic expansion. Talking about things like Uber, um, you know, a lot of the social media apps obviously live off of that backbone. So you've got Facebook when they went mobile and then all of the other social media apps that followed like Instagram and Snapchat and TikTok. Um, <clears throat> those types of companies, are going to be recreated or started from scratch now and they're going to be ai native companies and those companies are, are being started um so it's imperative for palantir to have a very low barrier entry product that helps them build these ai native applications with the correct infrastructure to deal with security and safety and privacy from the from the get-go um, the sooner that they can have something that any startup anywhere could use and build on. And then they'll need to have some sort of verification later on down the road because Palantir is very 
conscientious about only wanting to work with companies and, and they could uh, geographically fence this to where they're only working with companies outside of China, outside of, you know, different areas in the world where the governments are set up on an ideological basis that's in opposition to the ideals of the West. Um, but, and, and honestly, that's going to be where most of the value gets created that as we launch into a, a new generation of technology, places like China are going to be catching up with us they're, you know, they're not going to create whatever those next technological applications are. Those are going to be created in the United States. They're going to be based in Silicon Valley. Um, you know, there's a good startup startup ecosystem there in London. Um, there are other areas in Europe where we're starting to see some pockets, obviously Miami, Austin. Um, so those are probably going to continue to be the hubs where these companies get created. And so, those people need to have access to the tools that Palantir has, um, and they need to be very low cost. They need to be easy to download. They need to be easy to use. Um, and if they can capture that market, they really do have a chance to be a top five, top 10 company 10 years from now in terms of global market cap. For me, it's really interesting that some of the companies you compared um, or you using as an example, then Uber, uh, Snapchat, Facebook, these are all companies which rely on network effects. And for me, keeping an eye out on network effects in the market is, is crucial because it's an amazing moat. Mm -hmm. Palantir has exhibited their ability to generate network effects uh, previously. For example, the Airbus Skywise example which they have come in at a major company, which has now trickled down into all their aircraft, all uh, loads of the com uh, loads of the uh, of the OEMs uh, partners now use the software, whether it's in maintenance, um, monitoring, other reliability functions. How crucial do you think the network effect of Palantir software could be to their growth, and also from a moat point of view? Yeah, I think it's absolutely critical. And it really, that's one of, I didn't use the word net, network effects, but that is exactly one of the things that I'm thinking about when I'm talking about. There's, they currently are growing the network effects that they have in legacy industries and in silos like aviation, um, defense. Those are two silos that they have incredible sets of network effects in those. Um, and like I said, they have a great, technological solution that solves a lot of problems for large, slow industries and institutions and companies that need to adopt technology. But then there's a whole different set of network effects for startups who need to be nimble and fast, um, and they're going to be innovating quickly. Um, they're going to be trying a lot of things. And so that's the one concern that I have is that they need to extend the network effects that they're generating from just companies that are already big and need to protect themselves versus companies that are going to be the biggest companies in the world. Um, I think that they are, it's great that they have a, a flywheel right now uh, and th those network effects that they've generated in defense and aviation and then in other areas are huge for them to be able to have momentum in their sales. Um, I would love to see them find a quicker way to attack new verticals with those network effects um, so that they can grow horizontally and not be siloed in industries quicker. Um, and then, like I said, it, it's critical that they also don't leave the bottom end of the market, the low end completely or, you know, untouched and open for competitors to come in and capture that segment that potentially could be much larger in the future.